Greetings people of the internet. Welcome back to Cold Front Kitchen. Today we've got a venison pot roast for you with dark beer as the braising liquid. This is one of those meals that stick to your ribs. You can eat off of it for three or four days and it's pretty easy to make. Just, you know, everything goes in one pot, goes in the oven, it's in there for a little bit, hangs out, comes out beautiful. So let's get into it. Okay, so what we have here is a top round out of a Hoss whitetail doe I shot this past September. Uh, it's exactly two pounds, which is about the size roast you're gonna want for this, but um, this cut of meat is pretty much what I use for this recipe every time. And we're gonna go ahead and salt this liberally, because this is a big piece of meat, and it needs a lot of seasoning. So go ahead and give it a good salt all the way around. Alright, so what we want to do now, let that hang out for a little bit and uh, let that seasoning kind of set in. So while we're letting the salt sit on the meat for a little bit, we're going to go ahead and prep our vegetables. And I have Yukon Gold potatoes, I have two whole carrots, fresh mushrooms, and a whole white onion. And except for the onion, I've gone ahead and cleaned these off, washed them off, I've peeled the carrots, cut the ends off. So let's go ahead and start with our mushrooms. Since these are a little bigger, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in half. If you can find little um, button mushrooms, those would be good, because you can just clean them off and throw them in there. But you don't want to like slice these up or anything because as long as they're going to be in the oven cooking since this is a braise they are going to fall apart if they're not in a pretty decent sized chunk so go ahead and leave these fairly large and we're going to do that same thing with um, all the vegetables really so those are in there carrots you just want to like cut these into thirds And for the potatoes, um, I'll cut these in half. You want them, again, a fairly decent size so that just don't fall apart. Uh, like I said, these are Yukon Golds, but any like white flesh potato will work. I think you could probably throw a red potato in there whole. But uh, I have not tried this with sweet potatoes or yams, but I would venture to say that those would probably just disintegrate into nothing, into your braising liquid. So I would use you know, fairly hearty fleshed potato for this. And for the onion, all we're gonna do here is just gonna peel it and quarter it. Alright, so here's a hot tip which I did not use, but when you're cutting your vegetables, think about what order they're going to go into the pan. So for this recipe, the potatoes are going to go in first and give us kind of a little bed to sit the meat on. So cut your potatoes last so that they're on top of the bowl so you're not in there like digging to the bottom of the bowl trying to get your potatoes out. It just makes things a little bit quicker. So all that you're going to need for this recipe is either a cast iron dutch oven with a lid or a ceramic coated cast iron dutch oven with a lid. Um, also, you're going to want a pair of tongs to flip the roast while you're searing it. This is just going to make things a lot easier. It's a lot easier to handle, you know, other than trying to do it with a fork or something. And you need just a regular oven. Alrighty, so I've got my dutch oven heated up to medium high. And when I put this on and start to heat it up, I also preheat my oven to 275 so that can go ahead and be warming up while I'm searing my meat and getting this together. So what you wanna do is either go neutral oil or today I'm gonna to use just a good quality olive oil. And you wanna get probably an eighth of an inch of oil in the bottom of the pan because you're almost gonna shallow fry it but we're gonna sear this thing all the way around and we're gonna keep turning it until 
the whole outside is brown. So this step right here isn't absolutely crucial, I guess, if you're, you know, crunched for time. But if you don't do it and you just throw the meat in there right into the oven, you're going to miss out on a lot of flavor. So here we go. Roast. Salted. It's been sitting for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes with the salt on it. We're going straight in here and be careful because this is hot. So this step right here, you're not really worried about cooking the meat at all. You just want to get that crust and that caramelization on the outside just to build flavors. Thing is looking nice so take it off put it on a plate and let's go ahead and get this Dutch oven off the heat over to where we can start assembling our pot all right so the best way to assemble this thing is to go potatoes first and I'm gonna take these since they're in half and go skin down all right and be careful this is still very hot this is just gonna give us a little bed put the meat on, it's going to keep it from being right on the bottom of the pan. And on top of that, I'm going to put the roast. We're going to nestle this kind of right about there if you need to. So this is kind of like just above kind of where the top of the, the oven is going to be. Just take a couple of these potatoes and just give yourself a little bit of room for it to just kind of sit down in there. All right. Just throw in our onions. kind of spread out all your ingredients evenly in there. So for the seasoning, we're going to add a little more salt in here, just so we've got a little more for our vegetables. I don't know exactly how much this is. You can eyeball it, but there's a lot of stuff in here, so unless you just go wild with it, you're not going to oversalt it. And we've got black pepper. Same deal. Alright, I'm going to go just a little bit of sage, maybe like a half teaspoon or so. It's pretty strong spice, so you don't want to go like super crazy with this and some people like to put rosemary in this kind of thing but I personally don't care for it so I'm just gonna go probably like twice the amount of sage you would put in there if you're gonna put sage and rosemary and just because I can I'm gonna throw a couple bay leaves in here. So these are just the cheap dry bay leaves. If you can get the fresh ones, that would be better, but I don't have those. So this right here is the real kicker for this dish, dark beer. This is gonna be our braising liquid. So this is a oatmeal porter from Highland Brewing from Asheville. I like to buy local when I can. And you, I would say use a porter or use a brown ale. You can use a stout, but I think it's kind of a waste, to be honest. So this is a, a really dark, really flavorful beer and still not, not a crazy amount of ABV. So it's a little, you know, you're not going to spend a ton of money on these. 
but you want to just go all the way around the edge. And you can use beef stock too, but it's just not the same. I mean, this just really, really makes this tasty. And that's assembled. We're ready to put the lid on and go in the oven. So here we go into the oven, 275 degrees. So that's gonna be in the oven for a minimum of three hours. I don't care what size roast it is, it's gonna take at least three hours. I've tried it with small roasts, I've tried it with roast that size, and it always takes at least three hours. So you can pretty much put it in there and forget about it for three hours. And after that, you want to take it out and check it about every 30 minutes or so. And it needs to be fork tender. I mean, you should just be able to like stick the fork in there, twist it, and just pull out a chunk of meat without a whole lot of resistance. Alrighty, so here's our end product. Everything's all nice and cooked. Onions are done, mushrooms are done, potatoes are nice and cooked through, and most important of all, meat is nice and tender. It just pulls right apart. Just silky. That's good stuff right there. So this is kind of one of those build your own adventure recipes. You can put more or less of whichever vegetable you like in this. Uh, I just like a lot of potatoes, a lot of onion, a lot of mushrooms. Um, you can serve this with either the beer that you uh, put in the braise, or you can serve it with a full-blown stout. One more thing I like to do, and I don't have any with me, but if you can get some sourdough, that goes really great to soak up some of the juice in this. So I know this isn't a summer recipe, you know, traditional summer recipe, but if you're busy like me in the summer, you can make this one time, you can make it say on a Sunday, you can eat off of it for three or four days and kind of take some of the load off of you during the week. So once again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and we'll be back for more shortly. Mm -hmm.